So here are some uh, biology calculations you might encounter as sort of part of the spec. So for example, with the heart, you might be asked to do the cardiac output, um, or what calculate the heart rate, etc. Um, or the bio. One thing here is standard standard deviation. You are not expected to be able to calculate calculate it in a written paper. You need to know what it means, but not be able to calculate calculate it for an exam. First of all, cardiac output, which is the heart rate times by the stroke volume. So the cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped out of the heart per minute. You can, if you like a triangle, this is the triangle. So cardiac output at the top heart rate and stroke volume at the bottom. You might need to do a two-part calculation. You might need to work out the heart rate individually. So a heart rate can be calculated by 60, because there are 60 seconds in a minute, divided by the time for one beat, so the time in seconds for one beat. So this is a question where you've got enough information just using this graph to work out the cardiac output. So first of all, we're going to work out the heart rate using the formula 60 divided by the time taken for one beat. The time taken for one beat, you're usually looking for peak to peak or trough to trough, the time taken between that. And you can see on the graph here, we've got two troughs. So the time between the two troughs, you can read off, read off. The time between the two is 0 0.9 minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.8. So 60 divided by the time, which was 0 0.8, seconds gives you an answer of 75 beats per minute. So the heart rate is 75 beats per minute. So we've got the heart rate, now we need to work out the stroke volume. Again we can find this out from the graph. So the stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out per beat, of the ventricle per beat. So we need the difference between the least amount of blood in the ventricle and the maximum amount of blood in the ventricle. The difference between the two will be the amount pumped out. So we've got 130 if we read off here, and 60 if we read here. So the difference is 70 centimetres cubed. From the previous two calculations, we've worked out our heart rate, which is 75, and our stroke volume, which is 70. So our final cardiac output is 5,250 centimetres cubed per minute. Using a similar, very, very similar formula to cardiac output, but this time for the lungs, pulmonary ventilation, which is the volume of air breathed out per minute. Here we've got the tidal volume, and you need to times it by the ventilation rate, or breathing rate. Again, we've got a triangle, pulmonary ventilation, divided by TV, the tidal volume, times by the ventilation rate. So PV over TV times VR, if you want to use the triangle. Again, similar to how we had to calculate heart rate individually before, you might need to calculate ventilation rate or breathing rate by 60 divided by the time taken for one breath. Because there are 60 seconds in a minute, so the time being in seconds. Instead of a graph this time, I thought we'd try using a table. We've got enough information here to work out the pulmonary ventilation. So first of all, we need to work out the breathing rate, the ventilation rate, by 60 divided by the time taken for one breath in seconds. So we need to work out, first of all, the time taken for one breath. And we can see the time is 6 seconds, difference between 0 and 6. Now we've not gone all the way to 7, because you can see the person has stopped breathing out at this point, because the volume does not change between those two. So the person has breathed out for 6 seconds. So it would be 60 divided by 6, so that would be 10 breaths per minute. Next we need to work out the tidal volume. So the volume exhaled or inhaled per minute. So we need to the difference between the two. So this is the maximum amount of volume in the lungs, this is the minimum amount of volume in the lungs. So the difference between the two, so 6.5 minus 1.6, gives you 4.9 decimeters cubed. So now let's work out the pulmonary ventilation. We've got the tidal volume which is 4.9. We've got the ventilation rate, or breathing rate, which was 10 breaths per minute. So our pulmonary ventilation, we times them together, so it's 49 decimeter cubed per minute. Very, very common calculation is a magnification calculation. I like to use the triangle I am. Um, you might have seen them differently. You might have seen sims or something different, or O over MN. I like I am, where I is the image size, a is the actual size, and M is the magnification. The image size is whatever you have on the screen, whether it be a picture, a photograph, 
A is the actual size of the cell. So the actual size is usually very, very, very small. And M, the magnification, is how many times bigger the image is than the actual size. Something that's really important before you do any of the calculations is to make sure that the units are the same for the image and the actual size. So make sure the units are the same above and below for the image and actual. Otherwise, if you've been asked to calculate the actual size in micrometers, it'd be best to convert your image size into micrometers first. To do this, you need to times your millimeters, your image size, by a thousand. This is perhaps the biggest source of error, not the not converting bit. So here's a past paper question. We want to find out the actual size in micrometers. We've been given the magnification of times 50,000. We've been given, we want to find out the length BC, the actual size of the length BC. So first of all, we need to find out the image size. We said it's 30 millimetres. Now obviously this will differ depending on the size of your screen, whether you're using a phone or a computer or with a massive screen. So let's say that BC here is 30 millimetres. We've been asked to work out the actual size in micrometres. So first of all, we've got to convert millimetres into micrometres. So 30 millimetres times by 1,000 gives you 30,000 micrometres. So we've got the right units that we want. So now we do the actual size is the image divided by magnification. That's using the triangle that we had before. So 30,000 divided by 50,000. Remember the magnification is 50,000. So 30,000 divided by 50,000 gives you 0 0.6 micrometres. Do a little error check. So that sounds about right for a bacterium. A bacterium isn't usually more than 10 micrometres long, so 0 0.6 for the width sounds about right. This question, a bit more to it. One, the main reason being that we've been given a scale bar. We've not been given the magnification, but you do need the magnification before you can actually work out the actual size. We can work out the image because we've got the pictures on here. So first of all, we need to work out what the actual increase in length would be. The, not the actual, so the image size for the increase in length. So we measure the length of this, and we measure the length of this, and the difference between would be how much this has grown extra to that. So this one is 30 millimetres, this one is 70 millimetres, so the difference is 40 millimetres. The, the bit of the fungus has grown by 40 millimetres. We want the actual size in micrometres, so we need to convert this into micrometres, times it by 1,000, so 40,000. We've got the image size of 40,000. As I said, we need the magnification to be able to work out the actual size, but we've got nothing in the question which tells us what the magnification is. So we need to use the scale bar to do that. You can get the magnification from the scale bar. Whatever the size is on the screen, is the image size. So you use your ruler, always use your ruler to work out the image size. So the length of this scale bar is 50 millimetres. So 50,000 micrometres, because the unit here is micrometres, we need the, this length, the image length in micrometres. So the image length, we measured it to be 50 millimetres, so it's 50,000 micrometres. Now for magnification, now we've got the image, we need the actual size to be able to work out magnification. Whatever is on the scale bar is the actual length of the scale bar. So the actual length in this case is 500 micrometers. So M is I over A, so 50,000, which was our image size using the ruler, 50,000 divided by 500 gives you times 100. And magnification is times 100. So we've got everything we needed. We've got our image size, so it's grown by 40,000 micrometers. And we've got our magnification, which was 100, which we got from using the scale bar. So I over M, 40,000 divided by 100, is 400 micrometres. The actual length it's grown in micrometres was 400 micrometres. You could be asked to work out the enzyme rate of reaction using the formula the amount of product created or used up divided by the time taken. In this case, we're going to be using the mass of product divided by the time taken. And we're going to do it for the 27 degree line. I made a little bit of an error, so I tried to... Uh, so it's the 27 degree line. So this line here, the shallowest line, so for the 27 degree line. 
this is a straight line so we could have used any time along here for when it's straight so I've just used the first 20 minutes because that makes it nice and straightforward to do the calculation so the amount of product created in the first 20 seconds so let's go up from 20 seconds read across and that gives us 0 0.6 milligrams that was created in the first 20 minutes using the formula amount of products which is 0 0.6 divided by the time taken which was 20 minutes gives us 0 0.03 milligrams per minute so that is the enzyme rate of reaction for 27 degrees so we're going to we've looked at unit 1 calculations we're now going to look at some unit 2 calculations note here standard deviation you're not expected to be able to calculate for the written unit 2 exam but you are expected to be able to understand from a graph or from a table what standard deviation means. So here we've got surface area to volume ratio, often used for things like heat loss, the rate of heat loss in, in comparing that way, but you could be asked to uh, calculate it. So we've got a tiger. Let's say the surface area of the tiger is 9 metres squared and the volume of the tiger is 1.5 metres cubed. If we put this into a ratio, the surface area would be 9 and the volume would be 1.5. You don't use it, you want to try and get it to something to 1. So to do that, you divide both numbers by the smallest number. So in this case, the smallest number is 1.5. So 9 divided by 1.5 is 6, and 1.5 divided by 1.5 is 1. So that's a ratio of 6 to 1. Surface area is 6 to volume of 1. 6 to 1 you could be asked to work out the rate of transpiration using a potometer. Now, rate, again, so it's per unit time, so per minute or per second, so something divided by time. Um, in this case, it would be the volume of air, so we've got the air bubble, the volume of air lost from the leaf, per, or from the plant, per minute or per second. You could use the distance travelled by the bubble, per minute or per second, but that wouldn't be a true uh, rate of transpiration. Now, here is the equation that you need to work out the volume in a cylinder. Now, for some strange reason, the pi has moved, so the pi should be there. So it's pi times the radius squared times by 1, where r is the radius of the capillary tube, so half of the diameter of the capillary tube. And L is the distance that the bubbles move, the length that those bubbles moved in the capillary tube. So in this experiment, um, the air bubble moved 15.28 millimetres in one minute, and the radius of the capillary tube was 0 0.5 millimetres. So you need to calculate the water uptake in millimetres cubed per minute. So pi times by the uh, radius squared, which is 0 0.25, times by 0 0.5 is 0 0.25 times by 15.28, which was the length that the air bubble moved, so it's 12. Um, we then need to uh, work it out per minute, so 12, made a few errors on this one, it should be divided by 1, 12 divided by 1 is 12 millimetres cubed per minute. Just make that clear again, that should not be a times, that should be a divide, because it's per minute, so 12 millimetres cubed, that's how much air was lost, divided by the time it was in one minute, so 12 divided by 1 is 12 millimetres cubed per minute. Biodiversity, here's the formula for biodiversity. It's worth learning, but in the vast majority of past paper questions I've seen, you've been given the formula. You could be expected to define what each of these letters represent, so it's worth learning those as well. Now, you're usually given a different array of species, and you've given the number of different individuals of each species. I have told my students to extend the table, use a ruler, add another column, label this column as n, little n, the number of organisms of each species. So this is there's 20 organisms of the Himalayan raspberry. So the, the, each of these numbers is a little n. So the first column, so extend the column of n times n minus 1. So n, 20, times by 19 gives 380. 15 times by n minus 1, which is 14. 15 times 14 is 210, and so on and so forth. Using the formula, you need the sum, the sum of each of these. So sum of n times little n minus 1. So 
sum in this case is 906 to 380 plus 210 plus 72 plus 90 plus 12 plus 30 plus 56 plus 56 is 906. So that is your bottom number. The sum of all that's the bottom number. So we need the top number. So top number, big N, the total number of all the organisms. So we add them all up. So 20 plus 15, etc, 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 plus 8 plus 8 gives 80. So there's 80 organisms in total. So big N is 80. So it's big N times big N minus 1. So 80 times by 79 in this case, divided by 906. So 6,320 divided by 906 gives us an answer of 6.98. So the index of diversity is 6.98. That might not mean anything in itself, but if you're going to compare it to another community, if the other community had a bigger number than this, then it would be more species diverse. If the other community had a lower number than that, then it would be less species diverse than this community.